So um, as I tweeted out a few minutes ago um, or an hour ago or so, um, after watching this conference for the last couple of days and participating in other things, I really think the conversation style, it just does make a huge difference. Um, and from what I'm hearing, uh, if somebody talks for about five or 10 minutes, that's enough to keep everyone engaged and then you know, to, for people's engagement to stay there and then you know, switching to some kind of conversation or back and forth really helps. So I don't have another person to work with today. So I'm gonna find a way to work with, we'll either add people in if you wanna come in or we'll do it from the chat channel. Um, and if after we get there, We'll, we'll see. I'm hoping that there's enough engagement for that. So there is a um, YouTube video, um, and I think uh, we can – I'll reach up there and see if I can pin it. Looks like I can replace and pin it, so I'm going to do that. Um, and, uh, yeah, so feel free to check that out anytime or share it with any people. It's literally the same stuff. I've given this talk a few times in different forms. I taught, did this at um, FOSDEM early this year. Uh, not, not directly, but just let a um, – uh, a workshop and then a birds of a feather session and a talk at scale earlier this year. So again, this was all just gathering, not just get, gathering momentum towards uh, uh, working on something. So let me let me go forward and I'll spend a couple minutes talking about what this thing is and where we're at with it. So um, in general, we, we had this vision for the guide uh, around and and there's a and there's some history of how we got here. Um, and then I'll um, also I won't take too long on that. I'll talk about where we are here today and then what's coming next. And I will remember to slow down. Um, so the what here is what are we really trying to do? And and it, it started out by wanting to create a, a community management uh, best practices guide for open source practitioners. And practitioners is a nice broad term. It's not saying, oh, if you're not people whose job it is to be a community manager, air quotesy, but but anybody who cares about how we practice open source software and, and the development of that. And, and then also to make sure that it's written by and from the experience of, the, of those practitioners. And this can be practitioners of many levels. Some of the, um, I, we have contributions into this process so far from people who are, who are new to open source and their new questions pointed out the holes in our outline, for example, and created new content to be made there. So just like anybody comes along and can help fix the documentation and so forth. And then in this process, we're actually creating a community of practice to maintain and grow the guide. And a community of practice might be a new concept to some of you. And, um, in general, it's a it's a way that academics and so forth have studied how corporations and organization organizations broadly let's put it that way, um, whether a loose organization or a tight organization have um, have developed uh, communities of people, meaning people who you know get along in a friendly interpersonal manner, uh, who are focusing their community energy toward getting better at the practice of something. Um, so. Yeah, so this could be a loose organization like uh, skateboarders who get together and practice skate tricks, but or a formal organization like lawyers who get together to to um, to, to to take legal training and better their practices and things. Um, and so that's a that's a model of what we do in the open source software community. We're always trying to improve what we're doing, and um, and uh, the practice of of whatever software we're trying to create. And in this this kind of meta community here is to is to focus in on the best practices for how to foster and maintain those communities. So, so these two things are happening at the same time, which is something that, um, that I was always hoping was going to happen. So going back to uh, a little over 10 years ago, um, we set out to, 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 to deal with the fact that we were always answering the same kinds of questions. And the questions of, and those questions included not just what we should do for in open source and how you do something um, in terms of uh, you know, how you make a decision in open source or what's good governance or how do you deal with, with uh, difficult situations with users and so forth. Um, but to include the why, like why do we think this practice versus a different practice is important? And then to write down those things that we say all the time. Um, but in the last decade, there's been a, a more of an evolution in open source development practices. Lots of things are better understood, and there's always a chance to, um, you know, to improve what we're doing. Um, so in general, we have this kind of top level guide. And this gives you the viewpoint of, of the perspective or the opinion of the people who are working on this, which is that, you know, it's always good to start by understanding what we mean when we say community and open source community. And then, then the belief is that uh, the way we grow an open source community is by uh, taking care of users. Um, that users are the ones who are going to, um, uh, to, you know, take the software to a new level, help you find new things about it, just by the fact, you know, just by their excitement in using it. And some of them will become participants, and some of them will become contributors. Uh, if you set out with this goal of just going straight to the contributors, it's it's a lot more of a difficult process. It's sort of throw the code over the wall and hope the contributors come along. It's, is a challenge. So, so the model that we promote is this one of like you know make the software software wildly successful with users and the participants and the 
and the contributors will come along if you lower the barriers appropriately for them when they get there. Uh, and all of that, uh, talk about measuring success and avoiding the pitfalls from mistakes. And so this is the outline of the guide that we are working on. And this guide has been informed by these communication, these conversations that we've been having over the last year um, and as we began working on it. So there's been some evolution in, um, in that. Um, and here, I'm not really going to spend a lot of time uh, getting talking about the outline, um, but we have a number of chapters and we have a uh, GitHub repository that we've been doing all the work in. Um, in terms of um, uh, so, you know, in terms of where the latest really is at, so I can I can uh, spend a few minutes after this presentation and and show that um, uh, you know show where, where we are in the GitHub repo um, and explain why we're using all this tooling and so forth. The um, but the basic outline that we've got you know just gets into a little bit more deeply. Um, but one thing I wanted to highlight here is is uh, is actually three different pieces: uh, the new and to be done pieces. So. Uh, out of a conversation at scale, somebody suggested that we turn all of these this big massive guide into a quick start checklist for communities that are that are smaller. You know, two or three people maybe starting something. They just want to make sure they're heading in the right direction. Um, so that's an example of just a good you know good question from an audience turning into something that's going to become a nice work output to get picked up, right? And um, and this was a you know this wasn't just a question from the audience. It was part of a communication, you know, part of a discussion of a sorts. And you know, while we were doing this in a in a birds of a feather workshop. And then, in, um, and along the way, we realized we had a, you know, we're missing some content around project communication, and that came up with something that worked that was happening downstream in Red Hat, and um, that content got upstreamed into the open source way to uh, to help form the basis of that chapter. Um, and then the uh, some new content has come to us from another uh, public, another uh, book series, the Open Organization, and they had a chapter that didn't quite fit their outline on inclusive communities and the material fit. Uh, a hole that we had in terms of not discussing and not having discussed, um, you know, not clearly discussing how we're going to handle inclusive communities, um, and wanted to make sure that comes right up front in attracting users at the very beginning. You want to be you want to be inclusive from that very beginning point, so people can come and get in the project um, and know that it's software they can use and adopt. Um, and that's and that's uh, that's one of our preview chapters, and we're going to be doing a preview release within the next month of several chapters that are ready to go. Um, and so you get a chance to actually see what um, what the content looks like and 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 actually have some useful things that that come from it and um, help maybe possibly see yourself or somebody you know uh, writing one of the other chapters that we still don't have a writer for. Um, so it's it's an open source project. We're going to hit a milestone. We're going to release what we got. We're going to keep moving forward. Um, so then section on, or a chapter on guiding participants um, and talk about you know what motivates people. Uh, that's a preview chapter ready to go. Um, and growing contributors, uh, talking about what a contribution is, uh, making sure that people um, really understand how we bring people in to be contributors and in, and governance and so forth. And these are all, which is another preview chapter, so people can understand. You know, when you come into a project, you can know how you get successful, how you uh, progress forward in the project, and so on. Um, and uh, the measuring success, and um, so you know, discussing metrics, what's how the community look like, and then um, avoiding the pitfalls. You know, and and in there we have a, some new content around community management, self care, um, and then a place to talk about all these various why stories that that don't necessarily fit anywhere. Don't, you, they can that are uh, modular. They can fit in, uh, in various places. They're a story that that illustrates several points and are useful to refer to from different parts. Of the um, so this is just really the way that this community has, has decided how to organize this information to, to get it out um, into the world. Um, and we're using a, a, an ASCII doc um, workflow, you use, or ASCII doc using a GitHub workflow. And, and primarily we're starting here, we, we went to GitHub because it's a, a place where a lot of potential contributors are. And it's a tool that can allow us to have the to, to do open source practice about having the discussions about the content stay with the content. So we're not having uh, people hop all over the place. We can really um, have this kind of focused conversations, like the way a code and patch management process might work. Um, and the our best practices uh, as a community, or what we recommend to people, is you know taking care of being locked into platforms and um, and and so forth. And so it's something that we'll always keep on mind. Is you know is it's not that we're tying ourselves to GitHub as the only way to do things. It's how we're getting this this next version of the guide out. Well, as a community, everyone will continue to review what tools we use and where we host and so forth. Um, so this is just you know, us being both pragmatic and following our own advice, which is to be pragmatic and follow our own advice. It's a recursive thing. you got to love it. 
Um, I'm going to skip this. We'll, we'll look at the Git repo later. Um, and then in general, aside from what's happening in the Git repo, we have some meta discussions on the form and mailing list. Uh, it's pretty light right now because we're really focusing in on, on the book um, and those things are about that. But it's become pretty obvious that we're, you know, that it became obvious in the last number of months that we've really got a community of practice here. And we do have content that's come into the community that um, may not directly fit into this guide. And we're, we're looking at this, you know, how we can be growing a knowledge base of stories and um, best practices that, um, you know, that in, right now, for example, we're used, we're, um, those of us in Red Hat's open source program office, when we work on materials that we think could fit into the upstream or fill a hole here, uh, we work on those materials in a way that they um, can go get be directly upstreamed. So that they're they maybe they're a, a, a white paper or um, I don't know exactly what's the best term for it now, but just you know some two pager that explains like the basics of open source governance uh, may ha would have its origins in a much longer piece up in the open source way about open source governance and those things have got a direct uh, correlation. Um, uh, content upstream and downstream it's different than code because of the way that um, ideas get conveyed and 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 style and so forth comes along. So we're we're trying to learn how to work with that um, in a sort of new way. Um, this is a screenshot of what the mailing list uh, is is like. So we're at lists.theopensourceway.org. Uh, I can type all this stuff in if it, if it really helps. But we're using uh, we're using um, so we're using Mailman three, which has a web interface. So you can use your email interface or the web form interface. It works really smooth. I'm super happy with it. Um, I go back and forth all the time. Um, sometimes I'll type one, you know, literally in the same discussion over a ten minute period. Uh, right. So right now, what we've got is a project uh, project dynamic of, of us trying, focusing on getting the, the, the book content done, and um, and then uh, and I'll touch upon this a little bit. The, but the goal is to to mix up the, and shake up, you know, kind of blow up the governance, uh, do something different. Do the people who've come along and created the book will decide what the governance is. Uh, but for now, I'm the project lead, and it's just you know I'm just keeping this thing moving. That's the main thing I do, and I'm writing some stuff and I'm editing and so forth. Uh, Brian Prophet is our lead editor, and, and really rely upon his expertise and focus on um, good pragmatic editing, um, and and uh, definitely helps keep keep me and steered on the right path. Uh, Sean McCants is our lead writer, and his and he gets to work with writers, especially uh, in the development phase, if they need somebody to work with and you know, help uh, think through the content, and then also tooling and how to get things done. So we've got you know someone who's there with you while you're developing content, and someone who's there with you. Um, while while your content's being edited, and then the team of us um, all support each other in that. So uh, I might be working with you directly um, as your as your editor slash co writer person to help you out, um, or it might be Sean, or it might be Brian, or it might be Brian, or so forth. And then our, we've got a growing writing team. Um, some of the chapters I mentioned earlier, um, Gordon Half was the author on the um, uh, intrinsic value and contributions chapter. Um, and uh, Ashley Nicholson, Ray Pike, um, we were working on content around uh, community management, self care, and metrics and so forth. So we're getting, um, so we do work, you know, we're, we're, it's nice. It's a great way to track some of the answers. Here, work on this chunk of something that you have some interest around and then helps, um, you know, it's a, a great way of pulling people into the community. So we're having really good meta conversations. And uh, just really quickly, so you can have an idea of what it's like to, you know, what it takes to. Uh, uh, if you've got interest in working on this content, um, you go into GitHub and you there, there's an issue related to each chapter. And I guess we can look at this in a few minutes. Um, so each chapter has an issue assigned to it. So all the content and work is, happens in that issue. And um, you can just, you go into that issue and you put in your suggestion for an outline. Uh, if you need to discuss bigger ideas and so forth, the mailing list is there for you as well. Um, once your the once your outline is is approved, uh, one of the editors says, "Looks great. Let's go forth." Then you work on the content um, uh, in, via the, the the Git repo. You know, you use your own editor and so forth, working in ASCII doc, um, and then it moves through um, it moves through the uh, uh, the process. And there's a there's basically a pull request that happens at each um, um, at each at each step. So first you you get your initial outline or your initial draft just is pulled into the main uh, branch. And then as each editors um, move things along, uh, choosing who has the pen uh, from draft review to a development review and subject matter expert review and so forth, and we do a pull request process. So we've got a chance to, um, to track the discussion around that, that each step and so forth. So there's a, a to, um, I was gonna say to a large degree, 
um, to a very large degree. We are making up the process of how we are writing content and workflowing it um, by mapping an editorial work publishing process on top of GitHub. And um, it so happens that the open organization uh, is working on a book at the same time using the same process. We've got uh, several people in common across those two groups. So we're sharing, doing a you know, quick tight knowledge sharing. Uh, as a group, they're farther along in terms of their experience of creating books. They've worked as a group and they're on their sixth or I think they're on the eighth book by now, something like that. Um, but we're all brand new at working on this stuff in GitHub. So um, once we're done here, there will be something to do to, to help teach people about how you can use you know, GitHub to do this. Um, and I've got to finish up because I promised myself I was going to talk for more than 10 minutes. And it looks like I might be already getting into 15. Um, so we're, you know, we're working in the editing workflow. It's, we're basically creating things a little bit as we go. Um, September uh, preview release coming, 2.0 release in December. Um, I mentioned that the governance, we're going to be blowing that up. So as soon as we're done with the book, we'll, the community will decide for itself um, what, it, uh, what it thinks. And right there, I'm going to leave this slide up for right now, and I'm going to stop tacking. And I'm going to look and see if there's any questions that have come up in chat and just open up. Oh, um, and just open up for, for, for some conversation. And I'm also going to pull up the GitHub repo so I can show you, um, actually, I'm going to switch over to that, uh, what the workflow looks like. So I have never really tried to compress all of that that, that that quickly in there. I might have skipped some bits. Did uh, uh, So let me know, does that make sense? What questions do folks have? What's, um, do you have interest in using content like this? Um, just as is, like, hey, I can just point it to people and say, great, here's, a, here's how you do it and why you do it. Um, you know, and uh, is, this, is there any value in this content being something that you might pull into your organization? and? You might start like a quick primer from this content, be able to go and grab it, you know, because we're trying to write it with a certain sense of modularity in mind, but, uh, you know, we're definitely not there all the way. Okay, so let's see if I can stop this screen share and switch my screen share to something else. Okay, great. Oh, very, I have a slightly difficult time figuring out the selecting my window and hop into share. Figure out which one of these is actually the. I think I guess the one just to have no title. Okay. Yeah. Okay, great. I'm going to. Little bit. I'm going to make it wide and then increase the font in this a little bit. Um, yeah, okay. So, um, what I wanted to show, which is for, for uh, which is, you know, another kind of interesting aspect of this, I think, which is really the, the workflow that we're doing. So, we've, um, we've set up a number of columns. Um, the, or, you know, that, that, that define the, the stages of the work of, of the workflow. So we, we have an outline that are, that has a number of, cha of chapters, right? And, or, and each, um, um, yeah, I'm getting, I was get, I get, I'm so I get confused with the terminology around section and chapter all the time. So I'm probably going to confuse that up. But if, um, if we look at the outline, which I can do up here in, If I can do it by pulling up the outline itself, let's go do that. Um, so each one of these areas, so at introductions and attracting users, um, this is a chapter, I think, in our parlance. I keep calling that a section and these sub things a chapter, and, um, or maybe they are chapters, I forget. But each one of these sub points is, an, is a unique 
item. Um, like, why do people participate in open source? You know, that's a chapter, basically. And when we come back over here um, in editorial, and this is, I'm going to do all the way to the right, because that's one, a chapter that has been all the way through the edit process and is 100% complete. Oh, so good with the scrolling today. Okay, there we go. And um, yeah, oh, it looks like the issue needs to be reopened. So, <laughs> Or maybe it's not if the issue's closed. Um, so there's a um, what was my point with this? Um, yeah, so there's a, so there's a direct correlation. Each one there's an issue that's created for each of the items that's in the outline, and then that way, um, so the issue stays open until that, and that's why that issue is open or closed. Excuse me, because the issue stays open until something is in um, you know is. It, is completed. Um, although it will close, I mean, if, if it closes, if the issue gets closed for any reason, we just reopen it. Um, and I know I'm kind of using a mix of GitHub and publishing content here. So this is, I don't know how useful this is in terms of people's understanding what we're doing, but um, there's a there's a piece of content that needs to be written. It's an introduction for um, a chapter on community fundamentals, the, you know, kind of the 101 of what a community is, right? And if I open up the full issue, pop over to it. Uh, it's a place that we're, it, it, home, it, you know, it holds all the conversations in the comments uh, and all the details about it and so forth, just like any other issue would have. Uh, we've got it marked against a milestone of 2.0 um, and it's got some, uh, some labels. So, you know, it's saying that it's a chapter Saying that it's uh, an, a, 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 it's part of the editorial board and that it's introductory material as opposed to contributor oriented material. Um, so if we're, if we're so this is a piece of material that's also to be assigned. So if you come in here, somebody comes in, it's just, it's fairly straightforward or clear once you you know decipher what's going on that this column on the this column on the left is the material that's to be assigned. And um, and you can look through and say, oh, here's something interesting. I'd like to write a section on a guiding or a chapter on uh, on the types of participant contributions. You know, I know it's more than just code, right? So what is all of that and so forth? Um, and it may be, um, and it, and it may be that this is something that is that is written with several people who break it up into different parts and so forth. Excuse me. So there's a lot of opportunities um, to collaborate. For with people who are at different levels as well, some people may. Um, we were talking with somebody yesterday who's who who might have some some of their um, people who are new to open source go through and help uh, cr create the content about new to open source, so that they're helping write something and contribute it into here that is from their direct experience uh, right now. With those of us who have a little more experience coming in and editing and helping throwing the blanks on it. Um, so then, once something has been assigned, where there's we we just we have criteria for moving between each of these uh, um, columns, uh, in order for a chapter, uh, well, if, uh, from to move between the columns, going from assigned to drafting and so forth. There, along the way in here, there's going to be an actual uh, file that's going to be um, um, brought in as a as a merge request, as a pull request by the author. And this is going to be an ASCII doc file that's going to be the content of their, you know, their first draft of their chapter. So they're so they're in their drafting moment here. Um, and when um, so Ray, for example, is working on community metrics. That chapter is, oh, it is. Uh, I think by Monday is my. It's probably going to be ready to shift in, if not by the end of today. Um, there was a little bit more stuff that was going to happen for it, I think, and then it'll be shifted over. And that's going to be done by pull request. And when the pull request happens, you can see there's a linked pull request. Um, which is the update for it. Once that's all done, uh, the, the um, um, it will close the issue, which will then reopen. That's just one of the side effects of this. And it will, it'll move over to the draft review column, which means that it's ready for an editor to go in and, and kind of take the pen and make a draft review. You know, here's what, you know, here's what, here's, does this draft got all of the basics to be a chapter? Or there are big sections that say to be written, in which case we say, you know what, this isn't really a draft. It's, it's, pre -dra it's drafting. Why don't you take it back and finish those first? Uh, once we've uh, confirmed that it's got the same the same stuff, the editor makes a pull request and it gets moved to the development edit um, and so forth. Development edit is really going through and saying, should this section be here? Is there a section missing? Can you do some figures to describe this? You know, it's really thinking and help develop the chapter to be at another level. Um, we have subject matter expert reviews, which you would do in any time you have something significant. <clears throat> in this case, um, we have two or three chapters that I think are, are 
um, can really do with reviews from outside of the subject matter experts that are part of this community already. Much of this content, we are the subject matter experts, kind of, so we might as well just, you know, we don't have to go too far. But everything's read by a couple of editors to make sure that it all gets, um, you know, it all gets through that new level. And in this whole process, we really are learning about how we want to manage content and think about things as a community of practice. Um, so just, and it, for example, yesterday we had a discussion about the um, metrics chapter and real and and the uh, Chaos Foundation, I believe is it right? C H A O S S is a um, you know is a group that's working on real details around community metrics, and we share some some people who work on this project also work in that. Uh, but there seems to be like there must be some delineations between. Um, we, obviously, we have some things to say about metrics, and so our chapter here is focused on things like the kinds of things you would do if you were going to evaluate a project and find out um, how you would decide what metrics to track for that project, right? And that seems to me like it might be a reasonable thing for this community as a community of practice to say, we're going to help you with the practice of figuring out what you want to track for your community. And once you get an idea of what the five or ten or dozen things are, this community over here really has got all the stuff to get deeper into that. Um, thank you, Ruth. And so the um, you know, this, then these are, these are these are amorphous things that have really only when I referred earlier about their evolution in, in the last ten years. These are the kinds of things that have evolved. And ten years ago, there wasn't even a single place to have all of these discussions, really. And we tried to do that, and it really wasn't kind of right for that. We had some material there; it was good, but this is um, you know, this clearly takes things to a different a different level. So, um, so these are the things that we're sort of discovering as we're creating this this stuff, and and we can have that. Okay, great. Well. Next year, we'll think about that. Right now, we know we're doing the right thing by writing this content. It seems to fit into our um, into our process really nicely. And um, and another, you know, the standard copy edit, make sure everything's really clean, um, and and to bring it out. So there are there are several chapters in here. I'm going to click on the preview chapter tag, and so you can see that um, we have um, uh, we have several chapters in here that we're planning to bring out in the preview release. And as long as everything. It, it, um, yeah, so it's just bringing those things over the, over the, it's just like with any community, you know, getting yourselves to the next point, making that decision and saying, okay, we're going to do this and we're going to push forward and make that particular thing happen. Get it over the finish line. I would like a better metaphor than that, but that's what occurs to me. Um, so in all of this, and I, and, and, and I just want to refer back around to something that I think is, is, that has come up a lot that is a real, really strong interest to me personally and, and to those of us working on the project, I think as well. Is that is that we've we sort of designed for ourselves um, to a degree what we think of as like what we could think of as a, like the perfect upstream community for us to place all of this how you do open source stuff knowledge and by perfect it doesn't just mean perfect for everyone at Red Hat because what we know from our you know experience is that working with uh, people with an, with a community that is that is diverse from many perspectives. The people in it are, are the people in it uh, come from many different backgrounds, have many different life experiences, um, don't look like each other, don't act like each other, and are organizationally diverse. So um, group organizations of different types and size coming in and bringing their perspective on on how we do things. It's a really important way to to um, to to actually you know have had these ideas that 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 do the best in circumstances lift to the top. You know the best ideas thing, and. Um, and so for us, we, we, we would know like if we just created something that was really Red Hat centric, we would be you know, cutting off the blood supply, the, the oxygen for, um, for that to be able to grow to be something even bigger. And, uh, and, and which would then benefit us even more, right? I mean, it's this perfectly selfish thing. Um, again, that perfect word, right? So, um, uh, but, but, and then, and part of this is, is because it's, it's, you know, it's, it's going to be modular. It's going to be, it's, it, it has to be to, to fit the needs of the community of folks who come along for this. Um, and, and by modular, what I mean is, uh, again, referring back to what our open source program office does, um, we, we've got some materials and I can, you know, that we could point to that are out on redhat.com that are, that talk about, um, like for the governance is a good example that comes to mind right away, where the source material is here in the open source way, the con the chapter um, written by several of our community architects, um, longstanding experienced people, um, that same content, uh, you know, is the, now that's the upstream for this for this content that is put out under the Red Hat brand and, and spoken that way. And there's a direct, um, I don't know exactly what's the right word here, but there's a direct 
relationship between those particular pieces. And, and it may not even be that when you look at one and the other, you say, oh, you know, because um, it, we don't want to set off any plagiarism alarms or anything, too, I guess, right? I don't know. This is, we're exploring this. This is a whole new experience of how do you, like, how do you, uh, how do, you do things right and not, not ruin your search engine optimization, I guess. Um, so, uh, and, 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 our, and the expectation is that, that if we find this to be useful, you might find it to be useful. It may be that for your organization, you've got, you know, you bring in 100 new developers every year who are brand new to open source. And if you could have, if you could create your own comic book or super tight book that just so showed the, the 10 things you need to know to get started and you gave that to everybody at new hire orientation. And then two months later, you came along with the 25 more things you need to know or whatever. And the source for all of that comes from the open source way. So you're not having to go and create the material manually yourself. You're not having to like to double check, is this really the right way to do it? Should we be doing that? And then really importantly, you've got uh, that, that source of the reasons why. Because what resonates with other people, I, I think, I, you know, I think it bears out, is, um, is, is having hands-on experience with something or that vicariousness, like, oh, why did you, how did that happen? Like, oh, that was terrible. Oh, no wonder you do it that way. Yeah, let's make sure that doesn't happen again. Um, or, oh, what a wonderful outcome because you did it that way. We'll make sure we do that and learn from that. Um, and then come back and tell you how it was and see if there's something better that comes in. So, so, so that's the best thing to me about a community of practice is that it's a, it's a, a conversation that's ongoing and it's a way of capturing that conversation uh, that's meaningful to the people involved in it and meaningful potentially to people who are outside of it. Um, I think that was all the stuff that I had in my mind that I wanted to really get out there one way or the other, whether it comes up or not. Um, what are questions and stuff do people have or what, what in, does anybody want to come in on, come in on mic and ask questions or still anything in chat if I'm not missing anything? Anything else interesting to show in here? All the issues. Yep. I'm going to stop sharing. Cool, cool. Okay. Well, then that says to me that it, that that we have we are done with our engagement, and it is time for us to move on to the next cool thing. Um, so, how about that? Um, I will get done now and um, I'll hang out somewhere. I think there's somewhere I can go and hang out for a breakout session for a little bit. And um, I'm also in the newcomer booth, or should be. I'll make sure I'm back in the newcomer booth in the expo hall. Um, and um, we can, I, I, on my way out here, I will throw up my, uh, I'll throw up that slides. It should be the right one, right? Yeah. No, that's not the right one. I want it. I'll throw this up so it's up there on the screen. Oh, I lost it. It's gone. I lost the popover. It disappeared on me. Oh, well. Um, yeah, that's about it. <laughs> All right, well, thanks, everybody. Have a good rest of the conference. Um, hope to see you at the trivia at the end of the day. And uh, something I said today makes it into the trivia, because then there'll be at least one question I get right. Bye.